Merry Christmas once again to you. Have you ever been in that place where maybe um, holiday season with Christmas and everything is a good time for you? You go back and look at pictures from a previous time in your life. I remember doing this recently and I saw a picture of me where I just go, well, I, I shouldn't have done that. Any, anybody look back at pictures and said, man, I, you just, you know that you don't fit in with wherever you are. It just didn't work. I remember when I was like seven, eight years old, I lived in South Alabama at the time, and um, I had this little basketball outfit on, and back then, basketball shorts were actually shorts. Like, they were like, they were up there, you know? I had basketball, basketball shorts on, I had the tank top on, and you would think that if I'm wearing that outfit, and by the way, yes, I, I wore this to church, um, you would think that if I'm wearing that outfit, what shoes did I have on? Exactly, I had cowboy boots on. <laughs> And it was so, I, I remember years ago seeing that photo and asking my mom, like, Mom, what were you thinking? She goes, what were you thinking? I was like, you let me wear it. She's like, well, you just got to let your, soul, your son be independent. And I'm like, well, that was dumb. And I mean, I just, I looked ridiculous. Um, and I think sometimes, though, and I tell that story because I think sometimes as believers today, sometimes I don't know if we feel like we fit in anymore. In terms of just the United States of America, we have stepped so far away from recognizing Jesus Christ as Messiah. Sometimes I think we can feel out of place sometimes as believers. Um, if you know anything about me, I don't care where I am. I'm telling someone about Jesus. Um, and I'm telling people about Jesus and they look at me. I just I've, I got two heads or something like that. Um, and sometimes I feel like a little bit of a social uh, outcast. But that's okay, I think. In fact, I know it is. Uh, I, I think about, well, put it like this. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, middle of nowhere. And who does he appear to except for shepherds? Let me tell you a little bit about shepherds. Shepherds were uh, social misfits. They were outcast. Um, they were considered by many to be unclean. In fact, even the religious people, often they would not allow them to participate in temple worship much of the time. So here the religious leader is not allowing the shepherds to even participate in the corporate uh, or in temple worship because of who they were. They were, they were often immediately lumped up as being a thief. And so somebody would think shepherd, they'd go thief. You better watch your back on that guy. Better be careful. And so I, I, I look at the shepherds and go, here are people who are unpopular. They're social misfits. They're thieves. They're religious outcasts, Right. Their job was both incredibly boring, but dangerous. Because much of the time, nothing was happening, but if, if wild animals came and they had to protect the sheep, that's what they were there for, and to make sure that they stayed uh, safe and protected from any of the elements, including wild animals. And so here they are, mostly boring in their job, tedious, but also dangerous at times. And yet God chooses to go to them of all people, the very ones that most of us would not be comfortable around. God goes to them. First to an angel, then a heavenly host to say, hey, guess what? Guess what? Here's what Luke chapter 2 says, verse 16 and following. The angel has already come and the heavenly host is just, they're like, oh, check this out. And glory to God in the highest and it tells us, they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. So many lessons that are found in the birth story. In fact, when I look at even the cast of individuals that make up the birth story, you look at someone who's a virgin, a young teenager, Mary, and then Joseph as well. But then I do think about the shepherds. God used such ordinary and uncommon people to reveal himself about the birth of Jesus Christ. Again, I do believe that God coming to the shepherds is significant because the first of three lessons that we have to learn today is that Jesus came for absolutely everyone. Jesus came for everyone. And so if you sometimes feel out of place, like you just, 
you don't belong somewhere. And again, more and more, I feel like that in life. And sometimes I just don't feel like I belong. Um, it doesn't matter what I go to. And um, I'll, I'll give you another illustration. Sometimes I can go to a sporting event. I just don't feel like I belong sometimes. I like to go to sporting events to hang out with my friends who are going to the sporting event. But I just don't really care. That's why I make fun of Michigan and Georgia where I went. I don't, I don't care. I'm not saying it's bad to not cheer and have a good time. And it'll be great when Georgia beats Michigan in the national championship. It, it's good, but I don't care. I, I, I really don't. And so I can go other places. And I remember when the first year I was here, I actually went and I, had to, I bought a Michigan T-shirt. I was like, I'm going to fit in. I still, I don't even look natural on me. <laughs> right? It's a weird gold color. It just doesn't work. And you know, I just didn't feel like I fit in. And sometimes we feel that way. But I think that's okay. Because here's God appearing to the shepherds for the very first people to, to better say, hey, guess what just took place? I sent my son. The very thing Isaiah spoke about, all the prophecies is revealing all of it is coming true, and he's shown up to a bunch of people that probably we wouldn't give the time of day to. Wow. Jesus came for everyone. One of the greatest pieces of news that you can hear is that Jesus came for absolutely everyone. The angel tells the shepherds who the baby, where, where the baby was, where they could find him exactly, that he was wrapped in these swaddling clothes, which is normal for a newborn that day, but also that he would be born in a manger, not normal for that day because that's a feeding trough, right, for animals. And so they go and they discover the Messiah. And Jesus came for everyone. Now, Isaiah chapter 53 lets us know that the Messiah, even though um, really deserving royalty, would not come in the same way as royalty. That leads to the next point that we need to understand. Not only did Jesus come for everyone, but Jesus came in complete humility. Prideful people struggle with a humble king. Prideful people struggle with a humble king. It's the issue and the, the problem that we're having today in our world is that we are so focused and concerned with ourselves and that we have made our, we've elevated ourselves in such a way that is prideful. And prideful people struggle with a humble king. We don't understand why Jesus would come in this way. And in fact, let me even go further with it. The reason that we struggle with a humble king is because who do we want to often be like? We have somebody in our lives that we want to emulate. We have somebody in our lives that sometimes we want to look like. When I was growing up, there was, um, I grew up in the time frame with basketball. I'll, go, I'll stick with that theme right now with my cowboy boots and my, my tank top and my short shorts that I had on. But the greatest player of all time was in my generation. His name was what? Michael Jordan. Um, if you say any other name, you, are feel, you just feel welcome to leave. Um, Michael Jordan, right? And so I remember the first, the basketball shoes, the first Air Jordans, and they were black and red. And my friend, John Swinehart, he was my neighbor when I was living in South Georgia at the time, he got a pair, and I was like, man, black and red shoes, that's just ugly. And then he's like, these are Michael Jordans. I was like, oh, those are amazing. <laughs> because all of a sudden, you start wearing certain things, and you start dressing in, in a, a particular way, and you're wanting to emulate certain people. Here's the problem that we're having, though, is that so often we're looking for a king that has what we want rather than what we need. And so we're trying to look like other people and we're trying to be like other people and we want to we wanna have the same things that some other people have in our own lives and we have to be really cautious with this because if we're not, we end up looking for a king that has the very things that we want in the world but nothing that we need when it comes to spiritual freedom in life. That's, that's the issue that we're having today is that we want to look with a certain way. We want to have a certain swag even about us. Someone told me recently, they're like, Pastor, you look drip. I said, drip? Like, that's a real thing today. I, I thought that was a faucet that hadn't been turned off all the way. I'm like, what has happened to our education system? Amen. 
And, and we want to look at individuals and we want to emulate them and we want to make sure we have on the right shoes and the right clothes and that we dribble the ball a particular way. We study them or we study a musician who does things in a certain way. Friends, too many times we're looking for a king that has what we want, what we want rather than what we need. And Jesus came in humility and I can promise you our world needs more humility. We're looking for a king that looks like something we desire to be rather than the one that brings freedom and peace and kindness and gentleness and tenderness. And so here comes Jesus. He's coming for absolutely everyone, but he's also coming in humility. It forces us. We have to look at that and go, do we want a humble, gentle, tender king? We know that's how Jesus came, but do we, act, do we want that? Are we willing to follow that type of king? So he comes for everyone. He comes in humility. And here, the shepherds are going to even discover that king. I want to challenge you even to think about the people that are there with Jesus. We, we don't know if anybody else was actually present in that moment. Here comes this baby wrapped, yes, in swallowing clothes, but in a, in a feeding trough. They place him there. The angel comes with the heavenly host. They celebrate. They say, go find this baby. They go find this baby. Have you ever thought about what even Mary and Joseph, but others would have thought, who, whomever might have been present when the, sh- when the shepherds showed up? Remember, social outcast. You didn't hang out with him. Too often today, I think that maybe if that represented the church, meaning the nativity scene, if that represented the church, we would have put our arm up and said, hold up, not you guys. But here comes this king of humility stepping into the world. So Jesus comes for everyone. Jesus came in humility. And then another thing that we have to understand, the third point here, is that the shepherds were transformed. Now, we love that word here at Chapel Point. Why? Because we're transformed what? Yes. We're transformed followers. And here are the shepherds. Another way to think about it. Shepherds, heavenly host. Wow, this is amazing. The heavenly host came. Go find the baby. They go find the baby. They discover baby Jesus over here. And it's like, this is, this is amazing. All the prophecies coming true. All the prophecies that we've ever heard. This is fantastic. They won't let us in the temple to worship. But now we found the Messiah. Take that, religious leaders. And here they are. Does it say that after experiencing that, that they took off and went right back to the sheep and everything that they had been doing? No. It says they come over, they discover this baby, they discover the Messiah, and then they took off and they started to tell everyone, guess what we found? They didn't go back to what they had always been doing. That's what transformation is. And if you haven't been transformed, you don't know what it is to know Jesus Christ. In fact, transformation for the believer means that you're constantly being transformed. And the struggle that we have today is that there are too many people claiming to have discovered this amazing Messiah, but we're walking straight back to the life that we had previously. That's not possible if you actually encounter the the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. It is not possible. You're lying to yourself. That's why even today, my, my, I would say, challenge to you is not to even simply be here because you're here to, 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 to make a family member happy or anybody else, but to actually come and, and not walk out of this place the same as you were, but to be transformed because the shepherds are transformed. They left, right? They left and made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child, Everybody they spoke to were like, what? What took place? They wondered about like this. I can't believe this. And so they leave glorifying and praising God for everything that they had heard and seen. They didn't leave the discovery of the Messiah the same as they arrived. They were transformed. They got up, left where they currently were, in order to discover a king, and then from that point forward, they were never the same.
And so the challenge is not to stay where you are. The challenge is to not stay where you are, but to recognize what transformation is. Friends, there is no other way to have complete freedom and peace outside of Jesus. I'm going to tell you as simply as I can. There is freedom and life found in the name of Jesus Christ for all who profess faith in him. That's it. You can't be good enough. You can't be nice enough. You can't buy enough gifts for other people. It is only through transformation of the heart that you profess faith in Jesus. That is life and life eternal. That's it. That's all there is. It's not hard. It's going, you know what? We are prideful. We're spending all of our tri- time trying to emulate things that don't actually lead to life. And so I want to be transformed by Jesus. And you're okay being a, a social outcast, a misfit. You're okay with others looking at you the same way they looked at the shepherds. Remember, they would have looked at them and said, nope, you can't come in here. That's what, that would have happened in the temple. They would have looked at, at the shepherds and said, man, they've they got to be a thief. You, you better be careful around them. I came to the place a long time ago where I just concluded, it's okay if others look at me a little funny. I know Jesus. It's okay if people look at me as though I'm a social outcast at times. I know Jesus. And I know that the transformation in my life is so great, I will walk away from declaring the birth of the Messiah and I will declare his greatness. I will worship that king. It doesn't say that just a little baby came, oh, that's cute and that's cuddly. It says that in the birth of that baby, a king came. A Messiah came. That'll wake you up. That's Christmas. A king has come. A king changes everything. A king ushers in a new way of doing things, a new way of thinking, a new way of walking, a new way of talking. You don't care if the world looks at you in a weird way because you know freedom, because he is the bread of life. You will never hunger or thirst again because he has provided the food that you need. And so it doesn't matter if you're the Samaritan woman who is desperate for water, desperate for freedom, desperate for peace. It doesn't matter if you're the person who is blind. Jesus can make you see again. It doesn't matter if you're one of the shepherds and you think everybody else is declaring that you are a social outcast. Friends, it does not matter where you've been and what you have done. Jesus Christ came for everybody. He is the ultimate king. People in this world do not get to decide that. God's already declared it. Jesus came for everyone. That's why we're here on a Sunday morning, Christmas day, to worship the King of Kings. Lord, I come before you and I thank you for coming for everyone. I thank you for coming in humility. I praise you that we get to be transformed by discovering the birth of the Messiah. And so, Lord, if it takes angels in the sky singing to wake us up, bring the angels. But may we please every single person acknowledge freedom has come. Life has come. Peace has come. Glory to God.